Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm AJ Monty, Chief Technical Analyst with Sticky Trades. And before we get into the chart analysis, let me first point out, especially to the new members here, that I follow the seven-point trading checklist when establishing my price targets. Now, if you're a member, you know exactly what this is. If you're not yet a member, you can be. It's free. You can go to stickytrades.com, subscribe as a new member. It doesn't cost you any money to do that. And then you could download the seven-point trading checklist from your member page. You'll also have access to my midweek report. And of course, the weekly market report is always available on YouTube. To get into some of the geopolitics here, I'm going to have to go a little bit more into the politics. But look at this. Global spending hits an all-time high of $2.4 trillion. This is mind-boggling when you look at the cost of war and the cost of defending borders and such. It's getting absolutely insane. Now, some people are going to be upset that I'm going this far into the political realm, but I have to. You have to look at what's happening here. $95 billion in foreign aid has been approved. This is billion, not million. And we have a real problem because we have our own border being violated, and this is costing taxpayers quite a bit. Why am I even bringing this up? Because this does affect the economy in a negative way. And if you look at just the cost of building the border wall, we're talking 15 billion at most. What are we sending overseas? $95 billion in aid to Israel and Ukraine and other allies. $95 billion when we could secure our own border with 15 billion at the most. Now this is according to CNBC based on an estimate a couple of years ago, but even with inflation, we're not talking anywhere near what we're sending outside of our borders. To secure our borders would be a good thing. Why? Because the cost of illegal immigration, to put this in context here, is $150.7 billion spent just last year, which is more than the GDP of Mississippi, New Mexico, Idaho, Wyoming, Vermont, and other states. And so this is a big deal. It's costing us more to not put up the wall than it is to maintain and support illegal immigrants crossing our border. So that is enough with those numbers. Let me just show you what's happening with the U.S. Debt Clock. This is usdebtclock.org. I will put the link to this in the description box below. Why is this so important with regard to spending? Well, first and foremost, take a look at the U.S. federal tax revenue. Now, you could see how this is clicking away second by second. This is a dynamic screen that we're looking at right here. And I want you to focus, just take a pause here, and look at how quickly this is going up by hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is tax revenue. This is a good thing. This is what we want, right? However, what's coming in the front door is one thing, but what's going out the back door right here, look at the U.S. federal spending. This is actual. Look at how quickly hundreds of thousands of dollars are going out. In fact, what's happening right now is our spending has now surpassed the tax revenues. So we are in the death spiral right now, folks. I talk about this and what that could mean for the market. And I tell people all the time, we will see a collapse. Oh, no doubt about that. We will see a collapse. And when that collapse takes place, I've said it before, I'll say it over and over again, it will be shocking. My lows, my target lows long term are the March 2020 lows. This horizontal line represents where I believe the markets will pull back. Taking a look at the monthly chart, because we only have two more days left in this training month of April, we have a bearish engulfing candle right here. That is a bearish engulfing candle that is as bearish as a bearish Harami that we see here and a bearish engulfing that we see here, bearish engulfing that we see here. When we see these bearish candles, you got to watch out below. So it's virtually impossible for this month of April, this monthly candle of April to close anything but a negative candle. And that is the first red month after a long stretch of five 
green candles right there. So what's my forecast for next week? Believe it or not, I think we're going just a tad higher, just a little bit higher. So I'm going to do a two-part forecast on DIA. I think we're going to go higher up to that moving average. I think we're going to see the volume drop Monday and Tuesday. And then I think we're coming right back down. If you'll notice right here, that was the forecast from last week's weekly market report. We hit that precisely at 381.81. And then if you had a chance to catch my midweek report that went out right on that bearish Harami, I said on Wednesday towards the end of the week, we could pivot lower. And that's exactly what happened on Thursday. We didn't just pivot lower, we gapped lower. Then we see a little bit of a short covering here today. I think that upside momentum will continue very slightly. And then I think we're going to start making our move into a hard sell-off in May. So again, to reiterate the target, upside target at 384.23, Monday, possibly Tuesday, a drop in volume, then right back down to 379.61. I think we're going to see the exact same thing happen across all markets. I think we're going to see a little bit higher in IWM up to that moving average. You can see here that last week we hit my upside target on IWM at 195.64. It's what we do for the majority of the time. We are hitting targets. It's a very high percentage of accuracy with that. And that's why we're getting so many people following us and liking us and commenting because we actually have people trading against my weekly forecasts and my midweek reports. And as you will soon see in some of the comments below, People are making money. They're very happy. I want you all to make money. I can't guarantee that. However, if you decide to trade, and this is a first round of trading for you, I would strongly recommend you learn how to read the charts first. That's an absolute must for trading. The charts not only help us with high probability targets when you learn how to read them correctly, but it also helps with managing risk. So enough said about that. Next week, my upside target, Monday and Tuesday, for IWM is going to be 199.75. We're going to see most likely a continued drop in the volume. Then I think we're going to see a pullback from that moving average right there to a downside target of 194.59. Why did I make the pivot point right at that exact spot right there? Well, you have to look to the left as I draw to the right. You see this? I'm drawing a horizontal line from that former support. So a former support, once broken right here, generally turns to resistance. Go back last month and you will see that I have a video on the weekly market report that explains how the role reversal works and how you could use it to forecast your own stocks. It doesn't matter if it's an ETF like this or an individual stock, role reversal is a very important concept. Go back, review it, the link for that video is also below. Going on to the Qs, take a simple QQQ. What do we have? We already have a move up to that 20 period moving average. That's what I said we would see. I think we're going to go just a little bit higher again, just like Monday and Tuesday. See down below, we hit the upside target from last week at 419.57. My upside target for next week, Monday and Tuesday, is 434.69. The drop in volume will continue. And then I think we're coming right back down to fill that gap. That's another lesson that I put out on the weekly market report on how to trade gaps. So we're giving a lot of lessons each and every week on how to trade using these concepts, roll reversal, gap fill. We'll talk about the rubber band effect. We'll keep talking about the rubber band effect eventually and, and Bollinger Bands and such. But stay tuned and subscribe and you'll get a lesson each and every week. So downside target to fill that gap, 425 73, again, I believe we're going to see continued drop in volume for next week. That, too, is a roll reversal resistance right there. Former support, once broken, turns to resistance. You see how I teach through repetition? That's because repetition is the best teacher. All right, going on to SPY. This is the SP500 ETF. We're going to take a little bit more time on this one because we are seeing a rally up to this roll reversal as well. I think we're going to go a little bit higher to test that resistance. And just like the other ETFs, as I mentioned, I think we're going to go back down. With the SPY, I think we're going to go down a little bit harder, past this gap fill here. So upside target 
to the roll reversal at 512.67, a drop in volume again Monday and Tuesday, then right back down with a target of 501.22. Why am I going a little bit more aggressive with SPY as I did with the other ETFs? Here's why. Because if you look at the 50-day as it compares to the 20-day simple moving average, see what's happening here? Today, we officially crossed below the 50. There it is. I'm going to magnify that for you. See the blue line? That is officially crossed below the 50. That is very negative for the markets. We could still go a little bit higher, but this whole area in here is going to be a resistance point for the market as the trend is shifting. Now, for those of you who have been around and with me for a couple of years or more, I called the high back here in 2021 on a very similar pattern. We started to see lower highs. We saw the moving averages cross back here. I called the end of the great bull market back here in the fourth quarter of 2021. I never called the high. I called the topping pattern. And then what happened? We proceeded to go lower. What I think we're going to see in the coming months is a absolute duplication of what we've seen back here. So be prepared for that. In the month of May, this is a weekly chart now but in the month of may i think we're going to start trending lower and setting lower highs with lower lows and you have to keep an eye on that because if you're thinking about buying you have to be very protective of what you're doing on your risk management plan all right you have to be able to manage risk now i'm going to talk about the vix here the vix is showing a long stretch of red here i think we're going to go a little bit lower but not much i don't think we're going to go much lower and then I think we're going to go right here. I'm going with a longer term upside target that's pretty extreme. I've done this before, these two-part forecasts. If you remember, last week I had a downside target of the VIX of 1809. That hit. Obviously, it did that. Then on Wednesday, it was the only upside target that I put out of all the major market ETFs. And on the VIX, I said that we would most likely see it rally up to 17 05. It did exactly that yesterday. Now we pivoted back lower today. There's a gap still below the market. I don't think we're going to get down there anytime soon to fill that, but I do think we're going to go lower to 14.57. And then I think you're going to see the oscillate start to pivot up. And from there, I think the VIX could actually rip up higher to 18.38. So that is my report. One last thing that I want to mention because Remember, I'm trying to give you some educational value each and every time that we look at the markets. Keep an eye on Bollinger Bands. I talk about these with our members. I have my Bollinger Bands set with different standard deviations. I tend to go with the Bollinger Bands of three standard deviations. We got into a long position. I could tell you this now because the trade has already been announced. But we got into a long position with Meta for our members to a vertical call spread as the price was dropping below three standard deviations on the Bollinger Bands. This is what I refer to as the rubber band effect. When the price drops dramatically lower from that 20 period moving average, you could picture a rubber band with one end connected to the price, the other end connected to the moving average. The rubber band is getting stretched. So there's a good chance that the price will snap back to the moving average. Bollinger Bands help us identify when the rubber band is being stretched. You follow? Now, people have been asking me about silver and gold. Look what's happened. The upside of silver, the upper price range on the Bollinger Band set at three standard deviations was touched. And that's why I've been waiting very patiently for silver to drop. Now, I have cash available and I am waiting very patiently for silver to drop. And I believe silver is going to drop all the way back down to the green dotted line that I have here on my daily chart before I start to buy back in. You can see that today. Silver closed with a red candle. Failure to get back up over the 20. So I, I'm still looking lower on silver. But one little thing that I have not mentioned to the general public, but I have been mentioning to our members, is while I'm waiting for silver to drop, I'm taking that cash available and I'm trading stocks like SVRA. This is just my example of what I've been doing. This is not a recommendation in any way, shape, or form. But I just bought some more SVRA right here yesterday as it was bouncing off of that key support level. 
So I get in and out of SVRA while I'm waiting for silver to drop. I'm parlaying this SVRA position just like I do with silver. I just don't make this one as public. If you want to know exactly what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, how I'm doing it, and why I'm doing it, just become a member of Sticky Trades. Plug into my many webinars that I do throughout the week. You could ask me questions live. You could trade along with me. You could ask more questions if you like, learn the strategies, and then be able to participate in this market and not be stressed out over it. Again, thank you so much for liking, subscribing, commenting. I'd like to know your thoughts in the comment page about what you think is happening with our government spending. Is it out of control? Is it just right? Do you think we are going to have a problem with it? I would love to know your views, and I interact with people through the comment page. I don't just answer questions. I go in there, and I read every single comment, and when I can, I participate and exchange in a conversation through the comment page. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.